All righty, 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 roo. Hey, hey, hey. Woo. Ladles and jelly spoons. How we been? Folks, 47 for just a little while longer. Going to be 48. You know, I started telling this story somewhere. I don't know if it was on this channel, if it was on the live stream. Wherever, I don't know. The Golden Girls were elderly women, in my estimation. They were always the benchmark for old, right? When the Golden Girls debuted, I was a child. And they were old ladies. Some of them were older than others, but they were all old, right? And that was their status in my mind, you know, forever. So recently I was talking to my ex-wife wife. And we were talking about the Golden Girls or whatever. And she was showing, I guess the conversation started. She was showing me a coloring book, you know, an adult, adult coloring book for the Golden Girls that, you know, a friend had given her for a recent landmark birthday of hers. And I was like, I was like, I thought, you know, we were talking about, you know, joke. You know, like I was like, and I was remarking on the, the gift as if it were a joke. Like, ha, ha, ha. Because, like, you guys are like the Golden Girls. Like, her and her friends, you know, because they had gotten together with friends to celebrate this quote-unquote Hallmark birthday. My ex-wife wife is younger, not older than me, right? This is part of the setup. Like, haha, you girls are getting older. You're like as old as the Golden Girls. She goes, Ben, she goes, yeah, we're getting there. I go, well, that's impossible because, you know, you're younger than me. She goes, Ben, you're as old as the Golden Girls. I said, shut the fuck up or I'll fucking punch you. The fuck you talking about as old as the Golden Girls? The Golden Girls are senior fucking citizens. She goes, well, some of them were. But I said, shut up. I said, well, I said, the Golden Girls were old ladies. She goes, yeah. She goes, they were older ladies. She goes, but they ranged in age. She goes, some of them were. And then she started, started, started talking some noise about some uh, something about like um, Rue McClanahan's character, the saucy Southern Belle um, Blanche being. Get this, 47 or 48, or like 47. That's my fucking age. And I'm like, there's no fucking way that I'm as old as Golden Girl, right? There's no way. She goes, there is a way. I'm like, uh-uh. Michelle Embry says the Sex in the City hoes are older than the Goldens. Times do change. That's what started the conversation because she started talking about, she goes, she goes, the gold, she goes, the, the sex of the city girls are older than the Golden Girls. I said, yeah, I said that I said, no, no, no. I said, because, but the Golden Girls are, are, I said the gold, because I, 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 I confused her. I said, I confused what she was saying. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, no, the actresses may have been uh, younger, but they were done up to look older. Because I thought, you know, like that whole thing, like uh, Estelle Getty was the youngest of the actresses on the Golden Girls, but she was the one who played the oldest, you know, she was the one who played Sophia. Like, I thought she was saying that. And she was like, no, she's like, the sex of the city ladies 
are older than the Golden Girls were. I was like, shut your mouth. And then we go to the Wikipedia page, and sure enough, I'm like, like if I go to it now, like I forget what 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 their ages are. But if we go to the Golden Girls, it's going to be a shocker. And this is like the first part. This is like the life update part. Is I'm I got a birthday coming up. This coming weekend, we're 48. Getting closer to 50. Day. Whatever, dude. You know what I mean? I guess. But like, yo. Like, I was X number of years old. I was this many years old when I was realized that I was freaking Golden Girl status. Yo, that's a shocker. Like, I didn't even think that, like, 50 was... I think what it was, like, they and they whenever they do that whole, like, 50 is the new 30, that's like, yo, that's like, whenever they update it, that's like, that's not because, like, whatever, whatever is the new 18 or whatever. It's always because it's the new, like, whatever sucks. Less, like, the new 30. Like, that's because, like, 30 was bonerific. And it's, like, so it's, like, great. But then it's, like, you reflect. It's, like, what, what, like, I've got, like, that my buddy of mine that just went to that retirement community. Like, that, it's not, don't call it a retirement community. It's, like, over 50 community in Florida. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, once you can, like, do an over that, community in florida it's like oh shit dang like yeah fuck man you're that old that they can segregate you like you know what i mean like you're that old like like noise will annoy you like you can be segregated by that age shit fuck you're that old damn i don't feel that old hold on premise like so she's already widowed and like damn I started shooting people. Hold on. Oh, I'm looking for their ages. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay. Oh, come on. Like, that's the problem with Wikipedia. It's like, ah, oh, they're like, it's like, they're taking me through format, costumes, no. Excuse me, exterior and interior shots, no. Can you please just get me to uh, the Golden Palace, Empty Nest? No, I'm in the weeds. What happened? Creation. I, I took a wrong turn in Albuquerque. Premise, pilot, finale. Well, how did I overshoot that? What Okay. The... Premise. The show features an ensemble cast, but I need their ages. That's why I skipped over that. Crap. Where am I going to get a synopsis? Do I, do I need, like, do I need to... Go... Do I need to go to the sub Wikipedia for because Dorothy Zornak Zbornak has a sub wiki? And it, when I say sub wiki, I'm not on the Golden Girl wiki, I'm on like Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Dorothy has, has an entry on Wikipedia. Dorothy Zbornak is a character from the sitcom. How old was she when, she, when it aired? Is it going to tell me? Or is this going to tell me, like, what she's supposed to be about? Ay, ay, ay. Why am, I, why am I going this far into this? Fictional character biography. I'm going through them one by one. I'm on a hunt for Red October. This is dead air. What am I doing? This is crazy. Will you just... Okay, hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay, 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 okay. Dorothy was regarded to be in her mid-50s in the first season of The Golden Girls. So she's approximately 10 years old. I'm approximately 10 years younger than Dorothy's born act in The Golden Girls. Kalu Kale. I'm approximately 10 years younger than Dorothy. Wonderful. I'll, I'll check in with the chat every Golden Girl. Actually, you know what? It's the least I can do. I, I lied and said that this was going to be an unboxing video. So as I'm dying, 
I might as well do this. We'll, we'll, here's what we'll do. We'll alternate. Here we'll do. We'll have to speed. Say hello to the chat. Elephants in the room. Love you. You've been knocking it out of the, the, you're like the new golden coin 100 with your ability to be number one. Theoretically, the elephant should be slow and ponderous and last in the race, yet you're consistently number one. Gold medal to thee. Spooky. Not number three. Number two. Silver. Blueberry Wolfbridge. For the win. Jet Petty. Bronze. Jonaside. Honorable mention. Lisa Kane. Go F yourself. No, I'm kidding. You're awesome. Michelle Embry. You're awesome. Victorian Greyjoy. Love that smiley face. Synthetic Rebellion. Thank you for stopping by. Renee Miss Jonaside. Leave. Dump him. He's a loser. Uh, Synthetic Rebellion. Read some passages from that G.I. Joe book. Well, it's, uh, but it's, where is it? Oh my God, it's better to we, we, one thing at a time. I got things already. We got so I got Dorothy Zbornak. We just got through. I did the lot saying a little live chat. I've got win, I got a box of winners. I have I I I get things and I say don't undo um, this. Wait till the group and then unbox it with the people and all this time and then we don't unbox. We'll wait for the friends because not. For the first guy, we'll wait. But we gotta we gotta unbox it before it becomes not topical, right? Or maybe she'll be the one. I got my box. I got my. I need my. These are all winners. I got nothing but winners in this box. I originally was just gonna do, just gonna grab out. Should we do McBain? Should we do the one and only? Oh no no no, Lisa Kane, I love you. I was kidding you. I was kidding you. I was teasing you. It was just because of the uh, the sequence where you were in the sequence. We also have um, young Richard Dolan. We said we'd wait. We said we wait. Okay, we'll wait. Oh, did we say we? We said we. We said we. Said we uh, how quickly I forget. How quickly I forget. How quickly I forget. I think I was teasing. Man, dog. Ah. For later. Are you sure the, the the guy at the UFO convention swore to me it was a it was a Richard Dolan action figure? Are we are we sure that this is not? Uh, no, you're right. It's Young Frankenstein. We can. Um, I got to unbox something because there's uh, there's what are there? There's 17 Golden Girls um, spread amongst the seven seasons. Added together, they turn into Voltron. I'm getting confused. You like how I acted like you were gonna get a choice. So I, I've I've made multiple purchases and I've been waiting. I got a box of all winners, but we gotta get through these guys. We don't have to get through them all tonight. I mean it's not it's not like pressure. Also, I've been setting more videos to public. So we started doing that again. And that's been crazy. It's been burdensome. Red Ninja, Cobra, Assassin. These are the reaction figures by Super Seven. So these are not like these are these are a weird hybrid. These are a weird. This these are these are crazy nostalgia Frankenstein's. The reaction figures are born of nostalgia. 
for the old G.I. Joe and Star Wars figures of old. So in about the 2005, no, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, maybe two, I, I forget when the company started doing this. I, I know I've got figures from circa 2015, but, but I don't know when exactly the company started making them. But based on characters from, I you know, various intellectual properties, popular science fiction movies, uh, you know, weird 80s products, you know, different the aliens, weird, fr every, any franchise you could imagine. When Harry met Sally, just like any franchise you could imagine, they were turning them into these faux on a card back G.I. Joe style, but Star Wars retro three quarter, five points of articulation, just arms, legs up and down, no knees, no elbows, not like the G.I. Joe figures, just like the old school Star Wars figures. And then somewhere along the lines, they had the idea of reissuing the G.I. Joe figures in that scale and style. So they're bringing back an 80s product in a retro packaging and in a retro styling, but in a retro packaging and styling that's not authentic to it from the 80s, but a retro styling that's authentic to something else from the 80s. And that's what I talk about, but that's what can happen when we are not on, that couldn't have happened in 2004. That would have been impossible to think of in 2004. The, the first generation of people coming back, you know, 20-year-olds uh, uh, coming back and, and with their first round of disposable income or, or the first round of people introducing their kids, buying G.I. Joes for their, you know, now their first, you know, sons or tomboys, you know, daughters, you know, who are now like six or seven years old. Forget about it if they saw that they were trying to give them G.I. Joes that didn't move, like G.I. Joes? Or G.I. Joes that you weren't supposed to take out of the package that you were just supposed to collect and, 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 and just look at? No. That can only happen after we've gone through the Xerox machine enough times where the G.I. Joe figure has been completely divorced from G.I. Joe. You know what I mean? It's incredible. But that's part of the new appeal to it, to me. That it's lost in time. And then for me, it was just that it was was boss. And I got it today. And and what happened today to me at Target was great. I You know, I got one awesome figure. It was close to my birthday. So normally my my rule with retail is only if it's on clearance or on like ridiculous sale. That's normally my rule with retail I, or or if it's like something I got to have. And I saw something today that was like on the list of if I see it in the wild, I'm, a, you know, I'm going for it. And so once you do that, like once you like, you know, cross the Rubicon, once you cross the line then it's like all bets are off. So this guy got lost in the, uh, he got swept up in the thrush, in the, um, in the rush. And I am not complaining about that because who can't use an additional red ninja. So I may be as old as a golden girl, but I'm still young at heart. That's what I say. Spooky says that Lola figure is hella cool. Love Borderlands. Absolutely. Borderlands is amazing. Though we have to admit it has fallen on tough times, tough times, tough times. But the glorious 
you know, discovering that Luda Shuda uh, was definitely a glorious times uh, for sure. I mean, I'll, I'll I mean Borderlands, the first Borderlands. I mean, that was just, I mean, that uh, the role playing game dynamic, but like not in a fantasy setting, in a in a like a, a like a cyberpunk kind of like a, um, post-apocalyptic gun setting and with just like guns oh, and those guns with all the combinations. Brilliant. It was, I loved it. But, and, but just the sorrowful disappointment that was the, um, I forget what was the one that where it all fall, fell apart. It was the one that was made by an Australian developer and it was such a disappointment because it was the one where you could first play as a claptrap. And there was just this one level where it just became unplayable. I'm trying to remember which one it was. It was like the it was like labeled as a sequel or something. I forget what the name of it was. I gotta remember. I gotta remember. But it was like it was the one. It was like and it was like. It was like the first one that's that I remember like it sucked. It was like kind of like it like it got like bad reviews and it was like after that. And then the latest one that came out, like not the one that's like the new one where it's like a like where it goes back to being where they did that DLC where it was like a role playing game. But the one that came out before that, um where it's like they made the guns like too complicated. That was like the same thing that happened to me with Destiny 2, where it just became too complicated. Destiny 1 was great, but when it got to Destiny 2, they just made it too complicated. But anyway, for each guy we unbox, we'll go back to do another Golden Girl until I find the one that's as old as me. Do, 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 do. Golden Girl. Okay. I'm on a hunt to feel depressed. Rosen Island, Betty White. And if I find out that I only had to go like Rosen Island. Rosen Island is a ca character from the sitcom television series, The Golden Girls. No, no kidding. She was portrayed by Betty White for eight years. Jesus. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Biography. Rose Lindstrom is a Norwegian-American born in St. Olaf, Minnesota, to a monk named Brother Martin and a 19-year-old named Ingrid whatever, who died giving birth. <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't laugh. Okay. What? Okay. Just give me the age. I don't need, like, I don't need the Bob Hope backstory. Uh, come on. Uh, crap, come on, Jesus. Uh, come on. You're good. You're gonna tell me about the cheese man, but you're not gonna tell me about how old she is. You're just gonna give me a definitive like age on this lady. And meanwhile, like I'm in this existential nightmare, like hunting for this gal's age. And like meanwhile, the chat's like, "Oh, we found her age," and she's like, 80. Oh, uh, dead air, dead air. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Can't we just get her age? Can't you just tell me how old she is? Can't we just find out how old she is? Can't we just be told that she's this many years old? Okay, I don't care. Whatever. Just tell me. Ah, she would be 63 when the Golden Palace goes off the air in 1993. Wait, Rose is 55 years old in 85, which would put her birth year in 1930. Yada. What? Hold on. What? She's 55 and 8. Oh, she's 50, whatever. She's 55 and 85. So she's not out. She's not all. She's 55. Let's just say 55. So I'm, I'm, this, 
It's like basically the same age as the other bitch. God damn it. I got now checking with you guys. Is this doing anything for you? Do you care? Jonas side says 48. Oh. Hey, we say hello to, to Brad Magic. All right. Hey, Keats, how you doing? All right. Uh, by the way, uh, Keats, if you don't mind, if, while, while we're here, can you give me an elevator pitch on what exactly is you do in your life? I feel like we should do something with variety. If we just got a red ninja, I feel like... Oh, no, I, I, at first I was thinking I was just going to pull in and then pull things out uh, by chance. Maybe I'll do this. I'm feeling Chun Li. This is actually technically this might be by the same company because I think uh, I think reaction now at this point Super Seven I think is at one point I mean I can't tell it gets confusing sometimes you know, how the, these companies are it's like a shell game, um, but at some point I think Funko might have been involved with um, Super Seven at one point, um, but. This is definitely branded by Funko at this thing. Whether they're still connected to or they're still manufacturing this, is, but at some point they made this. I have a katana from Mortal Kombat that I love that's made in this style. I, I, when I first saw this, I, I really thought that this was like them trying to do kind of like a He-Man thing. And it is, kind of, but it's, it's got its own unique thing. I like it. Let's get her out. Also, you know, I like I like having the same character in different made by different companies and in different like versions. And I have this like really boss. Everybody knows that I love my love my love mine. Super sophisticated nightgown. Well, not nightgown, night nights. What would I call this? Evening dress. Bodacious Chun Li. Call her that. Don't fall. Don't fall. Classy Chun Li. Don't fall. And now we'll have her more understated, traditional. Don't cut towards yourself. Shmoo. This is how you call you hurt yourself on YouTube. So how's everyone else doing? How's your summer going so far? So I never know if things are dead zone. Because I've unsubscribed to people, or if people have just like you know stopped uploading, or what. I was I had gone through this kind of hyper jealous thing for a minute with Ivan Teller, because one of his videos didn't go like viral. I don't think I could say that, but like he had done this one video where it was like, um, I don't know, it was like. Burning Man Festival ritual something. I don't know what it was. like, But I guess it was like the combination of words and the um, image that he used. Like it got like, it like jumped up and like got like, you know, like a thousand views like in, in a day. And, you know, it used to be, I used to joke all the time like that me and his views used to like track like very close to each other. And, you know, now me and his views don't track next to each other at all. His views, you know, keep on going normal. And they are actually going, you know, at the same, they're growing at the rate that they were growing. And mine are tanking. My channels are, well, the RPG channel is technically growing. And every other channel is uh, on fire. You know what I mean? My channels are dying. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what's happening. Yes, Michelle Embry, the guy who talks about people. In the, no, it, it, sometimes he's talking about people living inside the earth. And sometimes he's talking to anyone. You know, basically, he's kind of like, he's the worst channel ever. And I, I know that, like, when even when he gets the views, I know that, like, that there's just like the that there has to be a certain large percentage of the views that he gets that must be people that just click on it and go, I clicked on this because I was hoping it was going to be something amazing. It was going to be this 
purported message from, you know, Galactic Space Command channeling of Bill Hicks talking about current events, but it's this, you know, but it doesn't change the fact that when you used to know that you would get like 500 views and this other guy would get 500 views, you know, neck and neck. And that guy is like getting, you know, continuing to get 500 views and you're getting like 50 views if you're lucky. And then that, you know, that that trajectory is probably going to continue to the point where you're going to one day get, you know, tomorrow probably get 15 views. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's one thing to, you know, go bravely into the night knowing that, you know, you're committing commercial suicide and you're going to, and your channel is going to die. And it's another thing to watch it fucking happen. You know, and um, so like at, like at first I was like I gone through like all these like ideas. I was like I was like I'm gonna like I'm gonna like look at like everything that he said because like Ivan always does the same thing. Like he always channels like three things. It'll always be like Galactic Space Command, Elvira's left booby. You know the you know the voice of the intergalactic now or whatever you know whatever it is but it'll always be like so like i was gonna take like whatever it was and i was gonna like like and at first like there was all these like transformational like ideas like at first it was gonna be like i was gonna be like i was gonna just take them and i was just gonna be like without comment i was like just gonna channel them and i was like just gonna be like do them better and just do it and then i was gonna set up an alternative channel where i was just gonna like just like just going to clock them like one for one, like whatever he would channel the next day, I would just like channel them, but obviously do it better until I just destroyed them. And I was like, that's like so terrible. I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm like, why am I thinking this way? I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is nuts. You know, like, let it go. Like, what is like, what is like, how are you like, this is like no way to live. And then I thought to myself, and then I, then the, there was like an insight and I, like, it was an insight about like, about this whole thing with like the guy that sued me and all this stuff and like kind of how this whole thing went. And not only that, um, but also, you know, like I'm not tuned into, you know, the world of the conspiracy things and all this stuff anymore, but I am tuned into like the internet of like lol cows. Like I spend a lot of time paying attention to wings of redemption and what's happening with him and dark side Phil and this guy called King Cobra JFS. And what's happening. The most dramatic thing that's happening is there's this one guy called wings of redemption who basically has had like, an over like 12 year, 13 year career on YouTube, you know, playing video games with like a lot of ups and downs, but basically living and sustaining his life playing video games online. And in the course of the last like two or three months, because of an ongoing sustained war with his troll community, like the community of people that troll him, that have been like upping the war and the fight with him over the course of like these 10 years. And there have been like multiple reasons. Like he said, like some crazy controversial things. There are like reasons why people hate this dude. Like he hasn't done anything like evil, but he has said some bullshit. He's angered people like, but he is just like, he hasn't done anything like real bad, but he just has trolls, but whatever. But like they hate him enough where they basically, they've gotten him banned off stream elements and, and stream labs where he can't get tips. They got him banned off Twitch twice. They got him banned off. He is basically, they have made it where he has now basically been ended. And he went on a war back and forth with them saying he was going to win. And where I'm going with this is this. It's about sustainable energy and anger. Anger is like a hot burning energy, but it's like not sustainable. And like, I was thinking about that in regards to like, um, like Roy Batty and like, you know, like when Tyrell like talked and was like, oh, but don't you understand? Like, you know, like the, 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 the candle that burns, like, 
twice, you know, twice as bright, you know, like, you know, burns, like, you know, burns out like twice as fast, like burns like twice as bright, like, like, you know, things like QAnon or Trump, like things that are burning on rage, like, and all like the things that we know that we're in this community that we were looking at and, and things that were based on like fighting that community that we were looking at and everything. And anything that's like based on anger and rage, like how fast it may burn and how passionate it may get things and it may get people, but it burns out real quick. You know, it's not sustainable. You know, and it's like even like scenes like based on like aggression, like like death metal, like in black metal, like, you know, like these like like it's hard to like sustain it. You know what I mean? Because. Like it, like when the energy is like move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward. It's like to where, to where? Because it's like if you're constantly moving forward, you're gonna like hit a barrier real quick. You know, it's crazy. I don't know, crazy mixed up stuff. This is the stuff I'm thinking about. Like, so I would like end up with these ideas, and I would be like there'd be a, a surplus of these ideas and I constantly sit on them and I'd be like, Oh no, no, it's like a video and wait, wait on this idea. And then like, try and make it into a video. And then it's like, well, let's let maybe like, let's just let it out. We'll just like, let it flow like through this. We'll just let it go rather than just constantly sitting on them, you know, or worrying about, you know, the perfect way, you know, to get it into, you know, a short form formulated piece. You know, and uh, you know the other thing is like this. Like so good, the other thing that was happening is like, there's a lot of frustration because I have all these ideas, and you know, but there's been a lot of work that I've had to do. It, you know, and this is also the thing why you have a lot of things to like. I end up with a box of things to unbox is because there's a lot of ideas and a lot of you know things that I want to, you know, take care of and unbox. But there's not a lot of time at the end of the day. I'm taking care of the work. I'm taking care of of uh, things for the kids. I'm taking care of, you know, uh, things for, you know, the ex-wife, wife, you know, things that she wants me to take care of or things that I need to take care of for moms or whatever. And so at the end, you know, and then, you know, you got mental health things. Like, you got to relax. You got to just chill or, or, you know, see a buddy or see a friend and, and, you know, you know, grab a bite or whatever. So then eventually you say to yourself, that's it. We got to turn on the camera. We got to make sure the battery is charged. And regardless, and we're just going to hit play and we're just going to sit there and say, whatever. If this turns into another ridiculous live stream, we'll just let it be. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. I'll do a quick jump into the live chat. No, and it's great, and it's crazy, but like you know, Ivan Teller, like constantly, like the thing about Ivan Teller, it's just like the thing is, it's like it's it's like so it's like um it's almost like um like like um hell is other people. I love Ivan Teller and I love Ivan Teller's content. And in a way, um, I'm so envious of Ivan Teller. And in a way, I'm so infuriated by Ivan Teller. Because like Ivan Teller, like, you know what it is, is that Ivan Teller eternally promises. Because like Ivan Teller, like always seems to know, like has his like finger on the pulse of, like exactly like what people want to hear come through, like what you would want to hear channeled. It's just that he is like, he doesn't seem to have the ability to like bring that any discernible different kind of energy through. Right. But he just thinks up these amazing people to try and get through. We have the reissued. 
R2-D2 from Star Wars droids. What distinguishes this R2-D2 from any other R2-D2? This is the one from droids. I love droids. Remember droids? Droids was the, the cutesy cannon, cannon destroying, absolutely cannon eviscerating, cutesy schmutzy cartoon from like 1985. Bomb ass soundtrack to beat the band. Let's take a look at this guy. Let's take a look at their R2. I don't know if I had like an, any original, like, um, oh, yeah, okay, okay. He's looking like a good one. Get out of the packaging. I don't give a goddamn about this packaging. F you, Star Wars packaging. We don't give a goddamn. I'm blocking him. Blocking them, blocking them, blocking them, blocking them. Because I'm a really bad guy. El Chiparino Plastic, which I love, actually. Totes Cheapo Plastic, but I'm loving it. Great detailing. Awesome detailing. Really cheap plastic, but a really amazing detailing. I like. I, like, I don't want to get like. I always want to bring them in, but... He's got these like cool cables. He's got cables on his feet. On his like two little main feet. His um oh, if you put his third foot up, his telescope thing pops out. That's cool. So he's got other things here too. What is this? Move side to side, move side to side. That's pretty boss. What's this thing? Tip through the middle. Let's look at this something. I'm gonna bust him now. Pretty cool. Ooh, look. It's a little like his middle foot is like articulated. That's pretty good. I like that. It's pretty good. He's got rollers on him. Look at that. Do, 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 do. Madam. Madam. Excuse me. Madam. Whoa. Hey, control yourself, buddy. What is this? Is this lock? Is this, can this lock here? This. This. I don't know what the deal is. It has got to be this. Is it just providing that much light? Is it this lamp is cursed? There's something. I don't know if it's this lamp or if it's this. Could it be this laptop? Whenever I have been streaming here. The heat has been insane. There we go. Oh, look at this guy's got all sorts of articulation. His th look, oh my god, this guy's a quality. Look at this guy, it's pretty good. I gotta tell you, there you go. Get an attitude for days. Look at this, excuse me, pardon me, madam. I like that. Da 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 da. Wait, give him a second to autofocus. This is so crazy. What I'm noticing about this thing, it's like it's like it's sense of like things have got to be like perfectly aligned. Like I think it's like I feel like things have got to be like just exactly like things have got to be like chorus line. Like we'll be in focus if we're just like all in a line. Like we all have to be like in a line. That's it, right? We all have to be in a line. We're in a focused line if we're in a line. It yeah. So so what the problem is is that like if you just if you just lie to people and just tell people what they want, you're you're doing great. But 
hey, what are you going to do? So then the evolution was, okay, come down a notch. And then it was going to be, it even got so bad as it was going to be. Um, now, this this whole evolution, it, it, it all transpired over the course of like 70, like 48 hours. I forget this, like this, this. This this channeling session he did about um, the friggin' Yada Burning Man thing. I didn't watch it. Must have gone up like 24, 48 hours ago, whatever it was. So it's like like just seeing the numbers, it's like watching it go up to a thousand, like so like whatever. Like I only thought about this thing for like I swear to god, like probably if I'm totally honest, I probably meditated upon this thing in rage, like tops like four hours sustained and in the course of that though i was raged and i was like it got to the point where i was like even like thinking about like like macho man randy savage channeling you know what i mean oh yeah ivan teller gonna channel the spirit of burning man but he's not the one going to tell you the truth. Yeah, it was, And I was like, what are we doing? You know, this is just God, come on. And then it was like, you know, um, then it was like, let's not do that. Let's, let's instead come here. And then it was like, let's instead, then it basically came to this. Like, like let instead come here. Let's come here and stay let's share what we share and just be like, be and, and tell the story. Let's instead of, and then it got to the point of like, okay, let's just channel those things, but not say anything bad about Ivan Teller, not set it up as a response or rage, or I have problems with Ivan Teller and Ivan Teller's channeling. So I'm going to channel the same things he's channeling. And we are going to embrace the competitive aspect of the divine male. And we are going to, like Paris, bouting against Heracles or whatever the fucking shit, whatever it is. You know what I mean? We are going to embrace whatever. You know what I mean? Like some bullshit. Like, and then I was like, let's just tell the story and be like, yada. Just like tell the reality of the story. Be like, it sucks to watch these numbers go. But then I realized. It was just the right image along with the right names and the right words. And if I want to, there's nothing stopping me from starting a new age channel called, you know, there was a guy, there was a guy called Light Guru, right? Who was a troll on the old um, psychic vampires. And he used to do the computerized voice channel. And he, he had, his channel was huge. Had like, you know, like 12,000, like, well, I don't know, have X number of thousand subscribers. And he would just like write those, like, he would just like write bullshit scripts. Like, you know, dear ones, you know, like Guru here is saying to you, remember that 1001001 is the ultimate solution to the problems of, you know, it was like this like crazy made up silly things. But the point was, it was just, if you want to put out nonsense, people will click on nonsense. And you want to do that, do that. But I realized, you know, when I think about it, when I would think about it, I realized the problem is this, is that knowing me, it's like that that ABBA song, knowing me, knowing you, uh, I know me. And what would happen if I went down that road? Six months down that road. PayPal account with what? Seven grand in it. A Rolodex booked out with sessions. And I'm sitting there going, I'm a fucking fraud. I'm ripping these people off. How do I fucking sleep at night? Oh my God. Oh, that little old lady. She mentioned she's recovering from cancer. Oh my God. What am I doing with my life?
You know what I mean? Oh God. You know, and then you're and then you're realizing this is it now. This is it now. Now you're in the hustle, right? This is it now. You're hustling. You got to keep that. You got to keep that phone number. But you got to keep that phone number ringing. There's no relaxing, right? If, if you're, if you are, and believe you me, my next business model that I'm working on, that I'm working on building up, my next business in my day to day. There's no escaping networking. Ever. That's what I've realized. The farmer man, the fisherman. You know what I mean? Friggin' Tad Wapley. No matter who the fuck you are, you ain't escaping networking. You ain't. I wish. I really wish. Do you know what I mean? You got to keep that. You got to keep on building those leads. You got to keep the phone number ringing, but it's, it, but you know, hopefully it's a hustle you can live with. And hopefully it's not a hustle. That's got to keep you, you know, got to keep on keeping on making up stories, unsustainable stories. Right. So I'm not working on a business model that needs me to make up unsustainable stories. It's a business model that needs me to make, keep on making up business. Not making up business, making business, but you know that's that's life. But yikes! So I guess I don't want to be Ivan Teller, but it's still tough to watch those numbers. But then again, you know what? I was looking at my numbers today because I was looking at my channel, setting some of these videos back to public. You know. And that was burdensome. Just looking at these videos, going, oh, geez, you know, saying, just clicking, looking at these videos, looking at these endless scroll of videos, trying to figure out what's what based on title, trying to remember what could possibly be two and a half hours of a video titled, I artwork, I public, I look at you. What the, f honestly, titles like that, what the heck was that? You know what I mean? Guess we'll wait to fit. Maybe we'll review that one at a later date. Come back and try and see what that one was. Until in the meantime, look for another Commonwealth Champion video to unprivate, right? Anywho, in the meantime, so Yada, what's well, coins metal? What's that? Droids. Okay. Got me a coin. Wonderful. I also got me some sort of blackened chicken. Cluck. Cluck is the is the chicken du jour of the current Fortnite season, it seems. I love the Fortnite figures, and I, I have a the thing for the poultry. Based ones, Obvi and Cluck and variations thereof seem to be this season's one. This will be my first Cluck explosive. I like him. Let's take a look. Though I gotta say, they find subtle ways to cheap out. Are you noticing this, folks? And I'll take another look at the live chat to make sure that I'm not totally out of out of commission. Things getting small. You're paying more for things, and things are getting smaller. I don't think I'm paranoid. I think it's the reality. I've noticed this over the last couple of years. I believe that McDonald's are subtly and slowly shrinking the size of their cups and their uh, items slowly so that nobody notices. I truly believe this is happening. And I also believe that stuff is getting smaller in the store so that we are paying more for things, yet we're getting less. Also, these these uh, Fortnite figures used to come with a small, like a, a square, It was it's like a stand 
but they also they click together to you know because in the Fortnite they they build things in the game, and this used to be a build dynamic. But I guess they're they're doing less with that because it was not a very popular, I think, activity with the kids. It was more that popular with uh, me as an adult into Legos and other elderly, elderly, elderly people rather than children, but. And I think also they're trying to save their money by giving us less bastards. But we get these stylish uh, chicken uh, th uh, drumsticks. But weird because he is a chicken based character. So why would he want chicken, you know, accoutrement? This is a, this is actually a recurring theme with Fortnite is 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 people with like cannibalistic um, accessories. I've noticed. I don't know if there's like if we need to worry about that. Let me take a look at the at the um, at the uh, live chat. Michelle Embry notices the, the the notes the dopamine loss that would be regarding that. Yeah, I know. I, it is what it is. I deal with it. Hey, we we deal with it. We deal with it. You never know what could happen in there. You look, it is what it is. I'm still here. I'll still be here. It happens. Look, I ride the wave. And I was talking. I uh, we come up, we come down. Looking at my numbers, I realize. The numbers were never that huge to begin with. The numbers were never that crazy to begin with. You know? There you go. I hear you. I hear you. Pragmatic says, whoa, droids was Boba Fett's first appearance? Was that, was it, is that possible? Snap into Sunshine Ivan. There you go. You know, and 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 Pride Magic, the cream of the crop, was literally one of the lines that I thought about channeling. It was literally going to be like, "You have to understand." Oh, I can't do it now. Now I'm losing my voice, unfortunately. Spooky scenes with figures. CW meets Ivan Teller outside of a UFO conference. But what we have to understand, folks, hold on, excuse me. When we're talking about me doing the channeling of um setting up the character of the macho man Randy Savage is because we know there's that Skyrim mod of um where they put Macho Man's face on the dragon and we know I have the blue dragon from Golden Axe. Did you also know that I have hold on wait for it Do I have her here? Or did I take her home? I don't know if I have her here. If I brought her, I may have her with Sarah and things are falling out of me. Darn it! No! I don't want my secrets revealed. Oh, no, 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 no. I think we're in luck. Yes. Dun, dun. Yes. I have Miss Elizabeth. And then I thought to myself, I immediately thought to myself, we could have Miss Elizabeth 
riding the blue dragon as I do the channeling. Well, if you missed the chanting, horse lover fat, the chanting videos are back. They're the videos, many of the videos that have been set back to public. Pragmatic being like the pop up video of the uh, <laughs> pop up video, pop a writer and creative consultant at the ad agency that had the slim gems. The thing focus groups liked about the product was the snap that comes when you bite through the casing. Dope. There we go. All right, getting down. Yeah, I've been telling now. Me now, meanwhile, meanwhile, meanwhile. People that I am getting gel of have day jobs, right? The, I, I'm getting gel over 1K views. Do you know what you can do with 1K views? Nothing. Take it from a guy that has seen the sweet, 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 sweet ad rev associated with like 28K views on one vid. Who, baby. When you see those like two cents, ah, uh, man, you know. You just know. You made it. Step into another frame of reference. <laughs> step, step into another dry frame of reference. We say hello to Juicy J. That's what she said. Ow! I only did that once. It, it didn't involve Richard Dolan. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't get it twisted. And we, we listen. Hey, folks. Don't get it twisted. Hey. Memories like the corners of my mind. And you sing? Okay, you can't sing. Corners of my mind, da 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 da, colored memories, and so the you know I, I assume the um, it is what it is. Um, it is what it is. Ah. And, you know, I, I still, you know, because it's like I looked, because I review those videos, too, the videos that I had, because, you know, I did the channeling. I did channeling, too. And there's the desire to do it, but you don't know how to do it ethically, where people are not going to get confused. And then when you do it ethically enough, then people don't fall in love with it. Because when you do it ethically, you've explained away the fantasy. People don't want ethically. They want unethically. They want you to tell them that there's someone really there. They want you to tell them that Atlantis is real. And that something's really happening. And that there's no savior race because you're the savior. And you're super powerful. But there's someone holding you back because there has to be an explanation for why you're succeeding. But we don't want to make you feel bad. So we're going to tell you that you're also the ultimate power. 
but it doesn't quite make sense, but it doesn't need to make sense because it's religion. And all it really needs to do is make you feel okay for tonight. It just needs to make you feel okay for tonight. Real problems happen when people want to turn the simple explanations that are just supposed to help us go to sleep for tonight into big, big actual explanations for what's really going to happen tomorrow. That's when people start going to war over stuff. And that can be some people's tickets to big, big cash prizes. But the more you amp up the game and the higher you raise the stakes, the higher you burn the engine, the higher, how do you burn that fuel? The faster you burn that fuel, probably the faster you're going to come crashing into that wall. I think as some people are learning. And I don't think some people are prepared for just how long life is. I never stopped working. I know there's a lot of talk from some people about over the course of this, you know, this has like been long and it's also been short, right? 2015 is like a long time ago and it's also like a short time ago right it's weird it's all frames of reference it's like the golden girls being old and it's like 48 being old and and 48 being young i'm old and i'm young i'm 18 I, it's like it's like this like demented version of like 18 by alice cooper i'm 48 and how do i feel about it ah. I'm kind of like an old guy and I'm kind of like, I'm still kind of, you know, I'm not quite middle-aged. Well, I'm middle-aged, but you know, I still get around. Maybe not like I used to, but I'm not like old, old, you know. I have my health. I mean, I'm not sex in the city old. I mean, thank God. There's that. So I love that, you know, they do things to justify. It's a deluxe action figure. We give you things like extra hands. And I'm like, great. You've also given me this extra burden. Now I got to pay attention to these extra hands. Now I've got this wonderful Miss Elizabeth figure and also this great extra set of hands. So every time I move from place to place, I got to move this great extra set of hands. And a Miss Elizabeth figure that's, you know, that's easy enough to move. You take the Miss Elizabeth figure and you put her in a box with the other action figures. But what about her little hands? You want to be careful with the Miss Elizabeth figure? Maybe wrap around in some toilet paper. What about her little hands? You don't want to get them separated. So then you got to put them in a little baggie. Oh, I don't know. You don't get mixed up with all the little, little hands. Get the little hands mixed up. Oh, man. Man, let me tell you something. I haven't been collecting these little action figures for too long, but I've still been collecting action figures long enough to tell you. Oh, man. You collect little action figures for just a little bit of time. Let me tell you something. What's going to happen? You end up with a lot of little hands. And let me tell you, you end up with a lot of little hands real quick. 
And I'm going to tell you something. All the female wrestlers all wear the same little black gloves. And all their little little black hands with the little fists, they all look exactly the same. They all look exactly the same. And you're like, you're saying to yourself, I'll just put those little fist hands over there in that corner. I'll remember. Those are Bailey J's fist hands. I'll remember. Whatever. You know, I'll remember. Did I get the name right? I really confuse things. At least I said it was her fist. <laughs> Woo! Anywho, Macho Man Ratty Savage. Woo! Anywho, who am I thinking of? There's another one. The Wrestler. I'll wait for live chat to catch up with me. Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> Jake the Snake. Another popular wrestler. You might want to get a hold of every once in a while late at night. Well, I got to do something to fill up this awkward silence. Now, I'm not going to say anything, but here are the extra hands that come with Miss Elizabeth. I'm not saying anything. I guess if she needs to hold the gun. Maybe she needs to hold up a hand, uh, bank. Or a friend. Anywho. For later. What else do I have in my box of wonder? I have the... We have Walter... <laughs> we have Walter 05. Walter checking in. We say hello to Walter. Walter, I don't recognize you from before, so we say hello to Walter. We also have... The we also have one of the greatest things that I love about modern um, figures is that due to advances in figure sculpting, truly, 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 long time lurker. What up, all? We welcome, welcome, Walter, welcome. We love Walters. We love Walters. Um, there you go. Uh, figures often, due to the the scanning and three D printing technology that's available, uh, figures are often coming out looking remarkably like the actors that portray them. You know, where you can look at these figures and say, truly, these figures, not only are you can look at these things and say you're getting an action figure of the character, Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, you could say, I'm getting a Bill Burr. I'm getting, and when I got this figure, believe you me, I liked this character. I especially liked this character as it evolved because when the character was first introduced, uh, this Miggs character, Miggs Mayfield character, it was a little one dimensional, but as it as it evolved, you it, it's it basically turned into it's Bill Burr in 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 in, in, in space and Star Wars. So uh, you know it, it's not the greatest likeness of Bill Burr, but it's enough for me 
where I'm definitely thinking that I'm going to need to get at least maybe at least two of these, you know, one for the car, uh, you know, one uh, for travel, just to make sure I have a, a Bill Burr on me at all times. You know, a business casual might have been might have been preferable, but I'll take a spacesuit commando um, just for, you know, uh, mental health reasons. You never know when you're going to need to whip out the world's tiniest uh, Bill Burr. Bill. Now I'm blanking on his name. This happens to me. I think I'm having a flashback because I'm, I'm getting thrown by the uh, nervous uh, kerfuffle before. And what's funny is that I've made I've I've made a, a similar comments and commentary before. What what's funny is this. I'll tell you I'll tell you a similar story. And I think it, it's a it's this dynamic in reverse. And it, and it's funny because I, I I I I talk to this. I talk about something not similar, but maybe a similar energy. I can deal with things that I'm expecting. I don't deal with surprises well. I can deal with things that I'm expecting. I, I don't deal with surprises as well. I can make the joke about sucking 10 guys off in prison in front of a Shriners convention, including my mom. If I know that's what I'm doing, but if I walk in improperly dressed to the semi formal get together, I won't know what to do with myself. At all, at all, at all, at all. Even though everyone there is my friend and family and has told me, we knew you weren't expecting to be invited here today or knew the dress code. It's only semi-formal and no one even gives a damn. Don't worry about it. I think... We may have a bonus because I think unlike I was very disappointed. I got the um uh, I'm blanking on her name, and I'll be honest about that. I have trouble with names, and I'm having I have trouble with um, word finding a lot. The female Mandalorian knight who plays opposite, she's played by the Starbuck from Battlestar Galactica. Ugh. And when the little version of her, not the retro figure, but the this gets confusing with Star Wars figures because they have three main lines of Star Wars action figures, two smalls, one large. The large action figures are the black series right those are the six inch action figures then they have the like three and three quarter figures that are like fully articulated like this one then they have the retro style that are like the old school that would just have the five points of articulation. I like the retro style ones like the best often. But I like these ones too. This was nice. I like this guy. Do, do, 
do, do, do, do, do. Stop messing with my head. Can I do a good Bill Burr? Let me see. I don't know if I can. The voice is kind of shot. Yeah. But I was just one thing I was disappointed with her with that uh character was her I loved the old mask figures because I love sarcophagi, I love armor, I love coffins, I love vehicles, I love putting guys and I love putting figures in things. I love things that could be, and I love masks and helmets. And the original mask figures had masks and helmets that you put on them. And so when I got this, this female Mandalorian Knight, she appeared to have a, a helmet that you would put on, but it turned out that it was actually just a head swap. So you'd have to, have to like, plop her head off and then put the, the other helmet head on. But this one, no, he actually has the helmet. That's fucking awesome. That's fucking cool. It's fucking Bill Burr with a fucking Stormtrooper helmet. That's fucking awesome. That's fucking awesome. That's fucking multi-purpose. Where's his fucking gun? I like the card. It's a good picture of him with the card. Where'd I put the gun? I'm always doing that. This is this is the fucking dinosaur hand all over again. Where's the fucking hand? The hand. Where's the gun? Close the exacto knife. The, the, Where's the gun? I just had it. What is my problem? Are you kidding me? Where did I? Why did I? Oh, oh my God! There it is. It fell on the ground. Jeez, the black gun on the ground. Oh my God. Oh, I love it. Look at all the cheese. My God. He has the little trigger thing. The little trigger finger comes out. Goes into that. Oh, my God. Yikes. That's awesome. Do, 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 do. Forget about it. Man, did not make them like this when I was a kid. Look at the shaft. I'm telling you. People are like, uh, why do you play with these uh, figures? I'm like, because uh, they screwed me and these like kids don't appreciate it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Shoot someone, dude. Bam. Don't worry, Miss Elizabeth. I'll shoot somebody. Dun, dun. I'm just going to do one of these. She approves. All right. Good job. Oh, no. Oh. Don't worry, she's got it. She's got a, a bustier on her underneath there. Press down. The, the last thing I'm gonna talk about before I before I uh, we break is uh the problem with uh, this is this is a video a preview of uh, a thing that I'm going to talk about on the RPG channel. The beauty of these artificial intelligence uh, art programs to generate images that can help you with your role playing game experiences for visualizing your characters visualizing environments, castles, locations, visualizing weapons. I paid for the update to and the paid subscription for this dream program on my phone. And I sit there and I just hit generate on these crazy combinations of these words 
that I think of for these weapons and whatnot. And I can generate endless, seemingly endless varieties of fascinating, fascinating creatures and swords and axes and guns and vistas and caverns and caves and twisted skeletons and, and whatnot. And it's like I'm drowning and I don't know what to do with these images and I don't know where to put them. And they're too beautiful to not save, but I don't know what I'm saving them for because I don't, I save them, but I don't know what I'm saving them to because I save them, but then I, I saving them just makes finding anything hard because what am I, I save them and then I save them to another cloud and then the cloud is full of these like fast, vastly becoming full of these like endless scores of these uncategorized pictures. And then I already had all these tons of pictures of these figures already. And it's, it's getting crazy. And I know and understand that there's other people out there, young people, old people, kids, and some people with like more discernment or less discernment than me and all these NFT weirdos. And they're all out there like thinking up different things and names of things and hitting these things. And they're all coming up with these beautiful pictures worth looking at and worth saving. And a lot of them really are pretty and worth looking at, you know? And these images are like crashing out and crushing out and, and squeezing out all like certainly maybe not art of all other artists, but certainly some other artists. I don't have it ready to, to show you F1 for you. I'll show you at some other point. Like I said, this is a preview statement. Uh, I'll show you the events when they actually roll the video. But I don't blame you for asking. It's understandable. Um, and what are we all going to do? Like hang out looking at all these endless pieces of, of AI art? There's not enough time. And what are we going to do with it? And there's, you know what I mean? We're all going to look at it and it's like, it is like the same thing with like making this music and like, like I felt, I felt the same way when I used to make techno and I, I felt the same way when I would make like ambient music and it would be like, it would come time to like record it. And I'd be like, why am I going to record it? Like why? Like, like hit record. Like why? Like people like release it as a CD, like release it as a tape. I'm like, why? Like, why are we recording shit? Like, why do we keep on saving shit? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, like at a certain point, it's like, isn't like shit just already saving itself? Like, I don't know. It's like, like, why not save it? But then everything gets saved, you know? And it's like, uh, then it's like becomes burdensome because then what do you do with all these archives? And it's like today, it's like going through these things. And then it's like, it, everything that we save is going to be the stuff that like, ends up being the evidence against us. Like effluent for you, like Tom was like saying, like talk about evidence. What do you think is the thing that ends up like destroying us? It's all this shit that's saved, right? It's all the stuff that's saved is the stuff that people find. What What's the stuff that ends up getting people canceled? Someone dug something up from such and such a person's Twitter feed. Someone dug something up from somebody's Discord server that they thought that they had like blanked out, right? That's how it always goes down. It's crazy. Here's that one for you. 
I'm a trained visual artist, and that AI stuff is creepy, good, soulless, end of life stuff. It may be, it may be uh, creepy, good, soulless, end of life stuff. It may be end of life stuff, but whatever you say, whatever you say about it, it's good. It's good. It's good. And it's getting better. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's going to become harder and harder to argue that the likes of you and me couldn't be manifested from the ones and zeros. When we see just what the ones and zeros can manifest. Arguably. But hey, all I'm doing, all I'm doing is hanging out on planet Earth. And all I'm doing is experiencing planet Earth. And there's chaos and there's contingency. And the chaos is the random elements that come shooting in from the left and the rights and the ups and the downs. That means that we can't always predict exactly what's going to happen from moment to moment. That we must always be prepared and accept that we can be thrown for a loop at any moment. But there is also contingency that for the most part, the elements of the now follow from the elements of the just before. And that things have a tendency to sustain and keep on keeping on following from the conditions that came before, generally predictably. So the space exists in the space where it is with the people that came here before. We have a shared history, shared dynamic, born over years. We've seen changes. We've seen transformations. There are less of us now. There used to be big time hoots and hollers, right? It used to be a big time happening place, but that's okay. It's okay when things slow down. One of these or one of these. Did that do it for you? Sorry, I do take requests. Even if the request is to clap. Or did you need one of these? Or are you telling the audience? He's down, folks. Clap. If you want him to live, clap, clap. Give him. There you go. You never know. I don't know how long this live stream will stay up. I don't know how long this live stream will be relevant. I know that not always, I don't think these live streams will be forever relevant. I don't know if I will save these live streams or if I'll just save them to some degree on YouTube. I don't know how to, I, I, I really got to tell you, these, 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 these channels become burdensome with the amount of like content and what it takes to like go through them and, um, you know, 
I got to stop like setting things to private all the time. I think they, I, I think that's part of it. Um, who knows? Stop making plans. I'll be 48 <laughs> on the 22nd. I feel okay about it. Things are okay. Where were we up to? We were with Blanche Devereaux. We're, 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 we're down to two. We got, we, there were four of them. We, we got two down. And I think I'm getting better at, at figuring out where, where in the, these bios, the, um, the ages. But okay. I feel like, okay, okay, okay. Okay, although notoriously man-hungry, Blanche was faithfully married for decades to her husband, George Devereaux. George died in either 1981 or 1982, four years before the start of the series in 1985, and at some point earlier, they had moved from Atlanta to Miami. In a 1990 episode, Blanche had a dream that George came back from the dead nine years later. He said that he faked his death to escape criminal prosecution for fraud, which he was framed by his own business partner. Okay, okay. Where the... um... Okay, okay. Okay, from this story, Blanche was shown to be born in 1932. On the show, Blanche is shown to have dated... Okay, okay. If she was born in 1932, then in 1982, she would have been... Hold on. Five, six, seven, eight. She would have been 50 in 1982. So in 1985, which is three years after, right? I'm doing math right. Please do the math for me because I'm getting I'm and I'm getting old. I'm now I'm having to multiple I'm having to use multiple numbers. If she was hold on, it, it, she's fifty three, right? In nineteen eighty five, because if she's fifty in nineteen eighty two, if she's born in nineteen thirty two. She's 50 in 1982. If she's 50 in 1982, she's 53 in 1985, right? Am I doing the math right? Julie Beans is 48, too. I think I'm doing the math right. So the point is, this, I, she's older than us. So we're not quite as old as the Golden Girls. All right. So I was wrong. So I'm not as old as her. Why did I think that I was as old as, as, as Rue McClanahan? How did I do that? Who made me think that? I was set up. I was lied to. Whoo! I dodged a bullet. What happened? I was fed misinformation. I was fed misinformation. Unless it unless it aired earlier than nineteen, unless it aired earlier than nineteen eighty five. Who knows? I'm gonna take it as a win. Last one, Sophia. Well, she's older than dirt, right? She had to be like ninety when in nineteen eighty five. Yikes. In her later years, Sophia suffered a stroke. Yikes. Hey, I don't even care. We know she was old. Well, she's old. She's old. We don't even care. Why did I think they were, they were younger than me? Or as old as me? Yeah, I've got many years. Yeah, the hell. It's hard to decide what to keep in the library, man. I often privatize. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, the, but then it's it's the going back and forth. It's the decide. So when you have to go back and forth to take it into privatize or onto privatize, I 
I'm done with you. An hour and 43 minutes and I'm done with you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for hanging out. I'll be back again at some point. Who knows? Or maybe never again. Maybe this is the last you'll ever hear from me. He left us with a cryptic unboxing, some nasty, then okay words about Ivan Teller, a vague note of forgiveness at the end. He clapped. Said Blueberry Wolf Bridge. Banged on the drum all day. Told us to go fuck ourselves. That was uncalled for. Read a tarot card. And was out. Did you ever hear from him again? Never again. Wah, wah, wah. They said his name was Smiling Pete. Did they? No, they said his name was C.W. Chanter. Why did you say the thing about Smiling Peter? Just fucking with you. It's my little way of keeping his legacy alive. Really? Yeah. How's it working out? Not really that well. Hmm. Well, I'll visit you again, Grandpa. No, you won't. Nah, I won't. But hey, You happen to see your mother this weekend? Be sure and tell her. You know the words. Oh, I'm yawning. Come on, come on, come on. Pick me a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. From the Osha Zentaro. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys and gals. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on, come on. And we got... This is... Oh, this is always... So, the Osha Zentaro. And, of course, they can't just say Prince or Princess of Cups. They have to give us this northernly or southernly direction. So, I have to go... Go to the book and try and figure out what the heck this is. I think this is I think this is the oh. I'm not gonna be able to guess. We'll just have to go to the book. Thank you, Osha Zentro. You're awesome. It's gonna be the guy. It's gonna be the prince, I think. I'm going with the prince. Going with the douche of trust. He's a total must. So if that's air of water, let's see what we got here. I'm not even dealing with you. Son of a gun. Here we go. Night of water. Perfect. I'm not even looking at the book. I just need to know who you are. Take a look at you. Give me a diagnosis. Then I'll look at the book. I'm yawning though. You got me sleeping. When I say you got me sleepy, night of water, I'm not going to say you got me sleepy like you made me sleepy, but you got me sleepy like you have found me. Like you have found me. We find ourselves with me in a state of sleepiness. So we're going to deal with that. But I trust you'll be okay with that. So when we have the court cards, we get to see the energies of the suits interact with each other. We get to see how everything is in everything. And we get to understand how things contradictory things may be found in seemingly odd places.
the maternal message. found in the gruff police officer. The tough, demanding Girl Scout troop leader. That's what we say about, we look at the yin and the yang. We look at, talk about people have aspects. All the cards are in every person. So the knight aspect of this card is the suit of air, the cerebral, the thoughts, ideas. And as complicated as those things could be. And the cups, that's emotions, that's feelings. So the whole space is feelings, thought, feelings, emotions. But the personification, the avatar, the incarnation, is a thinker, is a person. But it shows us that we might be tempted to think of the heart and the head as being impossible to rectify, as being somehow at split or cross purposes. What this card reminds us is that there's nothing inherently that there's nothing inherent about a intelligent person that dictates that they can't be a servant of the heart or be at service to emotion or to nurture or that they can't intelligently, logically understand or know that the time has come to let go. Well, that's my late night, perchance, too tired take on it. For another look, we'll look to the book and see and read first the commentary, then a quotation from the cult leader himself, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. Again, not a sponsor, not an endorser, just reading words of a man who read words. Humans read words and repeat words. Do you trust the words? Do the words mean anything to you? Think about the words. Think about the words. Think about the words. Don't just take them on board. Now is the moment to be a bungee jumper without the cord. And it is this quality of absolute trust with no reservations or secret safety nets that the night of water demands from us. There's a tremendous sense of exhilaration if we can take the jump and move into the unknown even if the idea scares us to death. And when we take trust to the level of the quantum leap, we don't take make any elaborate plans or preparations. We don't say, okay, I trust that I know what to do now and I'll settle my things and pack my suitcase and take it with me. No, we just jump with hardly a thought for what happens next. The leap is the thing. And the thrill of it is as we free fall through the empty sky, the card give, 
and the thrill and the thrill of it is as we fall, free fall through the empty sky. The card gives a hint here, though, about what waits for us at the other end. A soft, welcoming, yummy pink rose petals, juicy, come on. Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. Be careful. Here's, here's Bhagwan uh, Sri Rajni speaking. Don't waste your life for that which is going to be taken away. Trust life. If you trust, only then can you drop your knowledge. Only then can you put your mind aside. And with trust, something immense opens up. And this life is no longer ordinary life. It becomes full of God, overflowing. When the heart is innocent and the walls have disappeared, you are bridged with infinity and you are not deceived. There's nothing that can be taken away from you. And that which can be taken away from you is not worth keeping. And that which cannot be taken away from you, why should one be afraid of its being taken away? It cannot be taken away. There is no possibility. You cannot lose your real treasure. Okay. Words. Some of those words made sense. Some of those words made me think to myself, better stop and say, well, folks, I don't know if I'd follow those words. And part of me wants to say, I don't know if I'd trust that game plan. Part of me thinks bungee jumping without a bungee cord. I don't uh, I'd, I'd know. I'd say use a bungee cord. There you go. Okay. Love you, love you, love you. We love you long time. Okay? We say hello to Brando. Joining uh, late, but joining all the same. Till the next time we get a chance to dance together, I bid you fond to do. Okay? May the night and the roads, may they all find you well. May they not find you weary. May only your bed find you weary. And may it find you comfortable, warm, safe, and sustained. Till next time.